After watching this video, you will stop trolling on HackerM. You will finally learn to understand that jungle clearing is very important and that everyone who constantly says free camp gank is an absolute griefer. Anyways, let's break down the HackerM build for you. For your runes, you'll run Conqueror, Triumph, a Giant Slayer, Bloodline, and Overgrowth. You'll focus on heavy farming and being very efficient in everything you're doing, so Overgrowth becomes very important to supplement that. For your items, depending on the enemy draft, you will run into Plated Steel Caps as your first item, or if the enemy team is more magic heavy but you're not skirmishing a lot, Divine Sundra or Black Cleaver as your first item. Usually if you play into heavy AD, you will go for Plated Steel Caps, Divine Sundra, Black Cleaver, Death Stance because, well, it's physical damage and you really love to heal up from Death Stance passive, as well as the Triumph proc. After this, you can debate going for uh, Spirit Visage if the enemy has some kind of magic damage and you need more healing, or you can go for, for example, a Sterix Gage or even a Frozen Heart, and maybe in some cases even a Guardian Angel. For your enchantment, you will go for Gargoyles unless the enemy team has certain types of CC that will force you into going for Quicksilver. Your champion is all about being very efficient in what you're doing. You'll hear me say this 50 billion times, but it really is important. Make sure to utilize your first ability, don't skill your third ability on level 3, max your second ability the second, and always, at all times, keep on farming. Don't waste any time, get that overgrowth stacking, it's a lot of extra stats that you will really need to 1v9 your games. Also, don't get me wrong, there are situations in which you stop your clear and go for a gank, but it needs to be a sure thing to happen and a sure thing to work out because you don't want to waste any time. Any time wasted in the jungle roll for a mere coin flip is not worth it. You will lose gold, you will lose XP, and therefore the ability to carry more consistently. Yes, there will be games where your teammates will end, yes, there will be games that are unwinnable because the enemy is ganking 24 7 and it's working out, but this is the consistent approach in which or with which you will win a lot more games. And if you feel like you're flipping or you want to flip, just pick Lee Sin, do one camp and run into a lane or do the same on Twitch. Go for it. But if we want consistency, stay here, listen and learn. Anyway, let's hop into the video. Okay, hello, hello and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wild Rift video. And today we have the masterclass for Hecarim. Your, ch your champion is a very powerful farmer. You can also gank very effectively but there's something you need to understand when it comes to playing hackerum it is not losing farm and being very efficient in what you're doing starting with the jungle clear just make sure to utilize your first ability right before the first camp spawns and then hit it immediately another tricky thing is that you don't use your first ability instantly when it's up again you wait until you kill the big crook and then you use it otherwise you're losing a few seconds of time the same also happens uh, on other camps when it would be uh, like making a difference. Another thing for Hecarim in the jungle is most of the time you want to use your first ability to transition towards another camp because you want the bonus movement speed. This is something that is when you do the chickens is very important. Just take a good look at how I'm positioning them close to the patience range and inputting another skill point into my first ability. And now I'm leaving early to get the bonus movement speed and executing with my first ability again. We are very close to the very tricky part, which most of the time I mess up because, well, I'm a goofy goober, you know how it goes. But yeah, um, you use your second ability here to leash the blue buff and gromp. If you play it a little bit better, like I did in my short, you can actually do both at the same time. Like, even now, I could have attacked gromp again and then re-leash it, but now I'm already committed to what I've done. And yeah, you basically don't lose anything if you mess up. Um, as long as you only reset one, but if you don't mess up, you save so much time. Again, you see, I don't really cast what is happening on the map because it's very important for me to just farm and be very powerful through just the power of farming. I can get something done after I hit level 5 with absolute ease. Now as I'm in the river, I can be very aware of what is happening around me and then make conscious decisions. Take a quick, quick glance into the enemy jungle, maybe take a good look at the enemy lovely camps if there's something available, and then yoinking the enemy's camps. Now I have the respawn timer on this camp, as well as my level 5 and an easy kill on the Teemo. 
He has no way to escape. We just quickly get this done. I finish off the lovely crook. Make sure it doesn't reset so I don't waste time because the enemy jungler might be on his way here. And then I just peace out. Very important is you don't really want to give the enemy jungle anything for free. Like he can't really kill me, so I'm just you know bullying him with the with the uh, with the Darius. My Darius goes in, goes for the execute, and well, we are in this. Now it's very important to kite away, play around vision, play around our first abilities range, and get some free kills. We saw the auction for a brief moment, and we don't want to take any risks, so we just back off immediately. And now it's reset time. The enemy team is very physical damage heavy. Uh, you. Technically speaking, don't have to invest into boots instantly, and you can rather go for Divine if you want to be tankier. But in this instance, I go for Plated Caps and Sheen because I'll be very powerful with just the base stats. As for jungle clearing, I now know about the enemy jungle camps, I know of every piece of information I want, and sadly I cannot save my teammate. But again, you see me dragging the camp to the next camp, executing with my first ability, and just trying to be as efficient as possible. I see the Akshat in the mid lane, smite this to maybe get something done. I still have my ult very soon, and if the Akshan is not very far away, I can just get a free kill here. We see the Aatrox on the map as well. Easy kill, easy collection. Quickly checking his camps if it's available. It's very low chance that it's available because he just recalled here, but we are not losing too much. Now, since we have committed here, it's a very brutal oversight of my end that I didn't spot Aatrox sitting there for so long. So I wasted much time. But luckily for me, the Teemo is an absolute griefer and gives me a free kill. Now, with all the things on the map, I really want to make sure to get more gold. And, well, the disconnect happens classic. <laughs> Lovely. Now, because I disconnected here, everything is in shambles. I lost so much time which I could have spent so much more efficiently, and everything would have been so beautiful. However, we still get a free kill here, and we can take a good look at... We can maybe bully them a little bit. But then, the enemy team is fully appearing here, and, well, it is a bad time to be alive. Lovely death, thanks to <laughs> this connect. Quickly readjusting my Elgato, you know how it goes, and then we go back to farming. Now with everything being as it is, we can take a good look as to what is happening. If we get the idea or the information that the enemy isn't doing dragon, we can then go for a delayed play. But generally speaking, you don't want to be just randomly suicide rushing into the objective. You, it doesn't really matter too much if you lose it. But now, just go for clean kills, make sure to remove the Akshan first so he can't just revive you, the his allies. That would be very detrimental to every play and you can just pick up all of the other people here literally free and now we can just collect the dragon and then resume full clearing when you play hackerim it's just very very important for you that you just navigate around the map and realize what you can do steal enemy camps if they're available and then go back to your own jungle you don't want to get too greedy because if you don't have your ultimate available you still can get caught if the enemy is actually paying attention also again i want to put a really heavy emphasis on you using your first ability to fade away and now take a good look at the mid lane wave i want to fight here and just protect the void the wave because i shouldn't be able to die so easily I'm very tanky, and if I think if I play this a little bit better and use my auto attack for my um, Divine Sundra, I believe I have at the, as of this moment, I think I survive. Um, because I used my E to dash room for the burst damage, I didn't get off an auto attack, which therefore didn't heal me, right? So yeah, it's kind of a rough angle. But yeah, we are beyond fat, and now we can invest into even more health and ability haste to make us even more powerful. Now we go back to farming, we still have our deep ward in the enemy jungle, and we just cycle back. Invest points into your second ability because of resistances, and make sure to not grief yourself. Well, now we have to kind of ult here, because if we run there, he might get to execute to the tower because he sees us early enough. And yeah, 
Our old cooldown is not the, like, it, we don't really need it as of now because nothing will be happening. This Ezreal is uh, very cocky. He doesn't realize that I can just kill him. I can just literally run on the tower and run him down. He used Chiff as well. Like, he's dead. Like, I don't know what AD carries are thinking, but uh, yeah, you should not do this, my friend. I can just straight up dive you and not care. Now the Akshan actually cancelled his recall, which means if I saw this and paid closer attention to what the Akshan was doing, I could have pushed for another wave and even for the entire tower, granting me even more gold for free. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it, I'm just gonna be honest. Another different purchase I could have made here was um, Gargoyle to be even tankier. And now since I'm already here, I can just invest my time into a very high chance gank because they can't really escape, right? I'll at least get one, and if I'm really lucky, I'll get two. Uh, pop your W early so you heal off the crooks. Yep, otherwise things might get a little bit dicey. Now, since we can't really do anything on the map, we just resume clearing, right? We also see that the enemy red buff will be spawning soon, so we have to keep that in our minds. But never stop farming. Always try to be as efficient as possible. My team, for whatever reason, doesn't want to push this wave, so I'll just uh, put it upon me and just quickly take it. Now with the enemy red buff being available, I can take a small detour in broad vision, in broad daylight, and also try to take it. The Aatrox will not be very happy about that one, but I can maybe just yoink it away from him, which I do, so the Aatrox is really pissed right now. Uh, but the Aatrox girlfriend, the Lulu, is making his appearance, and they are really trying to kill me. And with everything they're investing, they're low-key succeeding, so I have to bail out. But... You know how it goes, we are back low HP in our jungle, so we resume farming. Kite the camp away from the action so the enemy doesn't know what's happening, and then don't waste a single second, go for more camps, and if you can't do anything about anything that's happening on the map, resume farming, get your gold, get everything stacking. The objective is spawning in like 25 seconds as of now, so we really want to, if we are hope, like if we are lucky we get the completed item, which we desire in this instance, I think Death Stance wasn't the most optimal choice, but it allows me to mitigate a lot of physical damage incoming and then get a healing on myself, which works really well with Triumph. I think, theoretically speaking, just going Sterex would have been better because it provides me with bonuses in terms of health and damage against both types of damage because it's not armor based. But uh, Death Stance is not the worst choice, but a suboptimal choice. As I reset it onto the timer, like tempo wise, I'm here on time and I can just invade as well and just fight them. Like right now, I'm Thanos. I'm a literal demon god. Like I really don't care what they're doing. I can just face tank them and beat them up. As you see, I don't even take damage. My champion is really fun and fair. I really don't care. Uh, but my Lilia, my horsey brother, uh, gave the enemy a little rewive. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna take midwave if it's possible, and then we take the enemy, uh, the enemy raptor camp again. Sadly, it isn't available. So what can we do? Well, we go back to the scuttle crab, and then we maybe take top wave. If that isn't available, we basically go back. My team is not very happy about what I was doing, so they chose to just run it down. So well, we go back in and basically kill everyone on our own because why the hell not? As you see, my champion, very balanced. The enemy is coming, so I have to immediately peace out. The Aatrox is very angry with me. I don't know why. Theoretically, I could turn around and help him, but the risk is just... I just don't want to take the risk. It, it's potentially possible for me to play this, but I'd rather go back to my camps and full clear again. Or at least partially clear. Because there's no threat of the enemy doing any objective right now. And the gold I gain will allow me to get even tankier and even more threatening. As you see, I'm beyond rich and I can basically do whatever I want. Another nice piece of info when it comes to playing Hackerim is just using your E when you walk behind somebody and pushing them into your team. But now I have the Spirit Visage, which helps me a lot into the enemy team's composition, which synergizes even more with my Triumph and my DD. 
Nothing's happening on the map, so we go back to farming, we take a quick glance as to what is happening, and after this, if we can do something about this, we just walk there instantly. We catch the, uh, the little Akshan, there is no way this little guy makes his escape for free. Like, he has to, he has to pay with his life. We will fight this. Death stands popping off, ladies and gentlemen. Remember my words? Low HP? Can't do anything, back to farming. Midwave needs to be cleared, we are here. Yoink, we got this. Now is the time where we could push for a Nasher because the enemy can't really do anything to us. Uh, but I think we have really low damage. Like Darius and Swain are not really that high of damage dealers. Now we have to make a decision for enemy jungle camps. Which side do we want to go for? Is it the blue side? Is it the red side? Whichever side you choose, it's fine. Just take away enemy stuff. Whenever they're dead, take away their shit. They don't deserve anything. Yoink it all. Uh, my Darius had some, I don't know, accident in the mid lane. I have no idea what the guy was doing. But yeah, as you see, I don't really care what they're doing. I just continuously farm, get more gold, get everything there is on the map, and then look for potential plays. The Ezreal is about to face check, there's a little Teemo, we go in onto the Teemo, we are still Thanos. We are still Thanos right now. We are beyond tanky, and we don't die that easily. We just keep on hammering our spells, keep on divine proccing, keep on doing everything. There's just no way they kill us. Now we need to play for space though, because the Ezreal and the Lulu can kite us, but as soon as he fucks up, we just run them down. And now we go for the Lulu to quickly heal up on the Lulu and it's literally free. The Teemo can be a problem though, because it's a Teemo, he deals a lot of damage to us, but if we are a little bit lucky, we can survive this. But we cannot auto-attack him, keep that in mind, we cannot auto-attack him if he blinds us, we still get him. But that's one of the biggest things you have to keep in mind. If Teemo blind is on you, your auto-attack will not hit, and therefore your divine proc will heal for zero. So rather wait for a second, get some spacing, play with vision, and then go for a play or the alt attack. We still have enough time to go for this. This is rather risky because our teammates are low. We don't really have a lot available. The enemy team is, however, griefing in mid lane. And yeah, it should still be fine. The Aatrox got killed but got instantly revived and we are just taking this down. The, they, they can't really contest us. They will not make it in time. I would have preferred my teammates to actually kill the Nasher with me. So it doesn't get close because I have the Nasher debuff, which is absolute pain. I completely ignore the entirety of the enemy team because they don't matter. There's a third dragon and it's going to be mine. I don't even check for the enemy blue buff. I don't even want to go for this because I want to go for the dragon immediately. But my dear brother is uh, having some accidents with the blue buff as the team appears out of nowhere. And yeah, it is a rough angle for the dear brother. The dear, the dear brother doesn't have a good time. But yeah, I can basically do whatever I want, I can punish them, I can bully them, and if they use any kind of summoner spell, it's very important, powerful, and good for my team. Ideally, my Caitlyn would have kept on hitting Dragon, so we can just return to this while I get enemy cooldowns for free, but it's solo queue, can't really depend on them. Which is the, the primary reason as to why I'm playing how I'm playing. I don't want to depend on my teammates, I just want to use them to my advantage. Now, as you see, the biggest issue on the map right now are the side waves. Nobody is giving a single damn about them, and the Ezreal just cancelled me. If you know Tatsu, Tatsu gets constantly killed by those, so F to him in the chat. Now I'm full build, minute 17, 4400 HP and nearly 480. Yeah, I can certainly die, brothers. Certainly. Ezreal is in the river, yoink my crap now brother, and you surely don't want to walk up to me because I can just run you and your entire family down and there's nothing you can do, you even have gauntlet. Jump over the wall, I'll hold right after you, my Darius flashes into Narnia Southwest, but I just, well, what are you about to, like, I just, you can't kill me, I just lost at the entire team. I just tank everything, dodge this, you die, it's free. What are you supposed to do? My champion is unbalanced. Now I quickly check for the wolves if I can heal up, and since the enemy team who chose to die, we just win those. Keep spamming your Q, as you see it has no cooldown, I can just keep on spamming it. 
And yeah, um, my dear brother should not have gone mid lane. She should have gone to the bot lane and do this. So therefore the wave wasn't in place. With the wave not in place, we need to play for Elder. And my team doesn't really realize this and rather wants to siege, whereas we can just get Elder. And if we get Elder, we automatically gain Nasha and with Nasha, we gain the win. So yeah, foresight is very, very important. My team is, I don't know, brawling it out up there, enjoying their time. But even if my entire team dies, it doesn't matter. As long as I have the elder buff, I will kill them all. Like, they have no chance. Lily buff will kill this, so no problem. Now I just run after them. Like, hello, Aatrox, what's up? And he's zooming away with literally Mach 10. Like, how is he faster than I am? And how is this team with such an annoying... Like, did the Lulu just veil my dash? She's faker. Just can't win. She's too good. Anyway, you know the drill. I'm low HP. What am I supposed to do? Yep, go for cams. Yoink it all. Heal up. Everything is free. Everything is yours. Whatever my team does, I can't influence it anyway. Might as well take enemy resources while I'm at it. Is what it is, friends. And we're nearly back to full HP. Lovely time. Take the blast cone so the enemy can't follow over the wall. Now we go for a blue buff so we have enough mana just in case they try something weird around Nasher. But yeah, there's nothing for us to spend gold on because we have everything already. So yeah, it's time for us to be assassinate Hecarim. We just take a quick detour into the jungle, say hello, beat them up a, quite a little bit. They can't really catch us because we can just ult away and if they choose to fight us for too long and make mistakes, we just kill them. Quick little sidestep and run away. Like what is he supposed to do? Now he just suicided. Now the entire team is dead. Because look, we still have all the defensive cooldowns. Like it's, what were they thinking? Look at them. I get exhausted, but I don't care. I just don't take any damage. And our deer is coming in. These tea mushrooms actually hurt more than anything else. It's actually hilarious how crazy strong tea mushrooms are. <laughs> Lilia. <laughs> it's lit. And then we just win. However, I got another game for you. Another Hackerum adventure. And we'll take a good look at the other Hackerum adventure. Now we take a look at the second game. As per usual, as I did before, we place our control ward at the blue buff. Ideally speaking, somebody on our team would place a ward around our race just because Kane can do something weird. You know how it goes. <clears throat> and then as per usual, we start with the Croc Camp. Now, what do you guys think? Am I going to fail the double camp again? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. How many times is my bot lane going to die and how many times am I going to full clear my jungle while having 17 billion gold? What's your guess? We will know very soon. But first, we go back to the jungle clearing. I know, friends, it is boring, but jungle clearing is the everything for a jungler. Yes, you can do your free camp gang shenanigans. Yes, you can do free camp into Scuttlecrab, free camp into whatever. But what happens if you fail? Well, you are behind as hell. You won't come back into the game unless you coin flip continuously, which is completely dependent on the enemy's champions. For example, a Lee Sin can do so, yes, because he can just hop into the lane and annoy you. But even then, Depending on the enemy jungler he is facing, he might have cleared one or two camps already and then he might invade you. And yeah, that life is not something you actually like. <laughs> but as you see, we are back at it using our first ability to space properly. And now, showtime, will we fail? Yep, we do. Why? Because I didn't watch my own short and I suck. This, this time I even reset this, you know? I even hit it again to just relocate it like briefly, but Bluva says, nope, you are not doing so. So yeah, I mess up the clear, but in the end, as you see, it doesn't really matter too much because you don't lose anything unless you reset both. After my clear, it's time to me to take a quick cleanse. Well, I can't even speak anymore, can I? At the river and see Kane. Kane didn't full clear his jungle, which means his uh, Crux will be available after this, and he will not survive. He failed for whatever reason, and I can just do whatever I want. If I noticed the Malphite earlier, I could have just ulted into his face, but I know for a fact, since the Kane was low level, I can just take the Crux. 
hello crux i can fully heal on those crux well not full heal but you get the idea and then we say hello to the malphite malphite is getting on altered and yeah it's a free wrap and he even flashes it's beautiful the orn is an absolute demon now we don't want to give the cane any form stack so we just keep on max range and we just walk away we haven't spent any of our gold and we really don't want to give him anything for free we walk over this, so the enemy believes we are here in color, like we are in the river, but in fact we are just recalling slightly behind the plant to force the Vladimir to back off from the playthings and the enemy cane to not go immediately for the scuttle crab, because he might believe that I'll go there. However, I will not do so. I will just walk bot lane because I have ultimate and ghost. Now let's see, did my bot lane get any summoner spells of the enemy? Let's find out. Hmm, that is quite weird, I get altered by him. I get flashed away from him. Uh, hmm, that's kind of weird. That's kind of sad. Summoner spells seem to be broken this patch, don't they? I mess up my Q, which is actually very painful for me. Mess up my Q again for so like sometimes it's so weird. I don't think I don't think this even gets close if I don't mess up my Qs. Uh, I'm I'm very certain. Sometimes it just doesn't keep on charging, which I don't really know why. Uh, the enemy's damage profile this game is also very heavy AP, but the uh, Merc Treads don't really help me snowball or fight early on, right? Um, because enemy champions have very infrequent damage as of now, and I rather prefer more power in, in damage that I can uh, deal with my camps and them alike. So I invest into HP and the Sheen item, so I'm closer to my Divine Sandra. My, my Draven is having some accidents again, which I don't really know why. Um, we see the cane, I just go for my full clear again, I don't really care, for some reason my Seraphine seems to be at fault because my Draven has ego issues, but I don't know. Um, typical Draven behavior if you ask me. But yeah, Draven should not even thinking, like, should not even be thinking about playing, like he plays into Varys and Braum, like come on man, you won't play. Just, just accept it. Now the enemy's HP bar is relatively low, and so I should say hello. I should. This is one of the few times you actually stop with your full clear because it's so free. You just get close to them and you say hello. The Varus is actually smart by pathing slightly away to the left, so the Braum survives. Now I immediately press reset because I don't want to waste any time and immediately go for the objective of my choice. But I buy my boots and a ruby crystal, because it makes me even tankier. I am super tanky right now. I should not be able to lose a fight and do anything I want. But since I'm not forced to do anything right now, I can just continuously clear and then go to the objective. My teammates indicate me to start with the, uh, we'll start with the Herald. We see something happening on the map. The Draven dies to the cane, so we know this is for free. Theoretically speaking, Oriana could have tried to uh, Bully the Malphite, but it's not really necessary. Um, but now, don't make the big mistake of running into the dragon. Because I don't have ultimate, it's literally a waste of time. We just place the Herald down here and go for the enemy jungle camps and hope they're available. If they're not available, which is not a problem, we go for deep vision or we just recall again. As I've said before, try to be efficient, don't waste any time. You need to be very aware of what the enemy is doing and take everything you can at all times. Now, we could have just stuck around and do nothing, or we just take enemy jungle camps, which we did. And then afterwards, we immediately go back to our camps and then look at what we can do. Our bot lane is currently having some issues, but they're so far away that we can't do anything about this, so we don't have to worry about it. Like, we can't change anything about it, so why would we try? But what we do, what we do know is that the enemy chickens just respawned. Vladimir is also overextending, so we are presented with two choices, chickens or and Vladimir. Vladimir says hello to us, but yeah, uh, uh, <clears throat> nice weather today, right? Well, anyway, speaking about chickens, we are back with the chickens. Taking this, Kane is fuming, he's one level behind, like even, like even though he should be like 50 levels behind for how shit he has been playing. But yeah, it's the world of jungle. Uh, for some reason my Orn uses, well I mean he showed him who's boss, I mean it is what it is. But yeah, as you see, bot lane camp's up again, we are getting paid. It's payday, so much gold for us for free again, and we are in a position to help out our bot lane with a lane gank. In these positions, when you don't know if the enemy has wards or anything like this, just walk through the lane. Do yourself a favor and don't walk through the um, 
the river because it's very likely the enemy has water there and just approach the lane from a uh, lane brush. And then try to go for the free kill on the backline champion, which the enemy champion immediately respects and he just goes to flash away. Um, we can just bully them here, it's completely fine, there's not much we can do about this, but the K if the Kane goes too close, yes, we immediately ult him and kill him. Well, now what are we about to do? We will defend this tower, friends, trust me, we will, and we will kill the Varus. Do you know how? I will show you. We just walk into the wave, and we just Q continuously. Now the Varus will believe he will kill us, but we just walk away, then we turn around, he stuns us, but our E is still active, so we dash away, so he can't proc his spells, and we just run him down. Brother, you got jebated. Now, quickly clearing the wave, we have 4,000 gold in our pocket and we really desperately need to go base. We are beyond filthy rich. And this is something that happens very often in Wild Rift that you will not be allowed to base because of so many things happening. But we get the Cleaver, we get the Merc Trads, and we are invincible. Now, what item do we need against the enemy champion? It's not going to be Duskblade, trust me. <laughs> it's just, I just have the item there. In typical Wild Rift Meneer, um, we leave the bot lane for one second and they just run it down again. You know how it goes. Ah, Varus, little do you know that you're dead again. Sucks to be you. My Orn is uh, experimenting with uh, his life insurance right now, but we just walk after the Malphite and see if we can get him. Let's see. We'll invest for this. And we will maybe get him. Ah, oh, never mind, he is too tanky, but well, we can't die, as you see. Like, we literally can't die. Push this wave, and maybe we can go for something. We basically scared him. We don't want to go for this, but what is Braum doing here? Yeah, I'm tanking everything. My champion was nerfed, by the way. Um, surely is weak, this patch. And now we hide in the Fokker War, and then the Vladimir gets CC chained and absolutely demolished. Yikes, man. You surely didn't think this through, or this could happen to you. And while we're at it, we just get, get away with Daylight Robbery. We take away everything they own. We don't show any respect. We are too tanky, and we just fight. We just fight, 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 fight. The enemy is going for us. We get away from them. We focus on the person we kill, we play front to back, and then we take our chance and go on to the enemy Varus. But there's one issue. We are out of mana. If we are in fact not out of mana, this is over and we win. But, well, mana is a problem. My Seraphine is having trouble with the blue golem as per usual, you know, just has to throw some spells for fun. And is my team going to kill them? I'm busy shopping, so yeah. Great, we did something. Now there's one big issue which I realized too late. I don't have any armor, right? I don't have any armor point as of this moment. Without any armor, Red Cane will actually eat me alive. He does percentage maximum HP damage. And without any armor, when he deals physical damage, I will just die, but now I'm still way too strong. And Orianna is just too goddamn clean. And now it's just a fight scenario, we just keep on fighting. And yeah, we just pick them up. Sadly, Nasher isn't up, and Varus is, uh... Whatever Varus is doing. Does Varus think he's safe? He think he can- I don't care about towers. I just run you down. Does Malphite also believe he can just survive? I'll kill you as well. Hakarim is still unbalanced as hell. This champion needs to be nerfed. <laughs> it just needs to be nerfed again. And now, as per usual, my cams. A fluid motion of constantly taking enemy cams once you spot the enemy champion, going for plays you know you win because you have the better stats, getting your overgrowth stacked like an absolute monster. I have so many stats right now, and I'm just not stopping. And thanks to Orn granting me the crafting ability, I don't even have to base. I can just continuously farm. And I missed this cannon. Yeah, of course I missed this cannon. Minus one. But yeah, as you see, we yoink Everything and he gives me even more crafting now. I have 10 crafts. What a lovely man Even though I don't need them, but well, I mean we just pretend we do but yeah Um now I believe it would have been the best choice to go for a thorn mail right now But I invest into a spirit visage, which I don't believe is the play right now I should be going for 
um, because I already have MR for my boots and magic damage reduction, and the healing is not as important as getting more armor to not get one tap by the cane, as well as having anti-healing. Um, I believe I can just fight them at all, like all on my own. Like I, I can just disrespect them, just run in, make sure that the moment I'm getting out of the CC, use my second ability to tank, and then just fight them. Like you see, I am so tanky, and only Red Cane is really much of a problem for me right now. The magic damage dealers don't really do anything to me, but Red Cane, that guy scares me. Not much to do right now, but it's a risk to actually go for Nasher. But we are possibly willing to take it. Oh my dear Jesus, Seraphine, what the hell is wrong with you? Anyway, back to Nasher. Um, in these positions, you are very much pos like able to go for Nasher. Um, but the issue with this is there is a risk in it because the enemy team has a cane, and I don't outsmite a cane. Like Hakram doesn't really have a tool to secure because your Q deals so little damage in comparison to Kane's Q. So yeah, it's still very much of a risk. And if you're not willing to take it, yeah. This game also, um, I will not go for Gargoyle. I will go for um, Quicksilver because the enemy's lockdown is a big problem. And Gargoyle will not help me as much as the lockdown denial. Um, as you see, I can just disrespect them. But the issue is I get stunned on the tower and the cane absolutely demolishes me. Look, the cane completely add me alive. Look at this. He does so much damage to me. And... This was a moment where I threw the game. Like, I threw here because I thought I could do something, which I obviously could not because, well, I didn't have any armor. All of them were tickling me. But the cane. That guy just consumed me. Rough time. The mental debate of finding the item you want to go for. The all-time classic. Debating between Amaranth Twin Gods to amplify my resistances and tenacity. Or to go for Thornmail. Now, silly me forgot completely that Thornmail also doesn't build out of a chain vest. So, I will have to sell this because Thornmail is just straight up better. I mean, I could go for Mortal Reminder... Um, it's also a valid option, but I believe Thornmail will grant me even more power since I have so much health already and it synergizes really well with this. But the backline is free for me and I can just go in. Like, I can just go in again, pop my QSS to fight the, the play here and just go deep into the enemy team. But again, the issue is the enemy cane. I just got completely destroyed by the cane. Like, cane and Varus destroyed me. But again, you might think it's the Varus, but it is the Red Cane. The buffed Red Cane is very good into melee champions, but all the other champions he's played into, like, he can't really deal with any of the other champions, but they're all not relevant but Orianna. And Orianna does a lovely thing here by taking this dragon, bless her heart, uh, 50 years later, my own is having some troubles not locating the enemy Varus. And yeah, the Varus made a big mistake playing on the mountain rift, and then the Orin just uh, bonks that guy. Awesome. Yeah. We love it. Wait. I am absolutely stupid. It does build out of a chain vest. Why did I think it doesn't build out of a chain vest anymore? Well, I rarely built this item, to be fair. <laughs> because I deal damage dealers and we usually don't go for Thornmail unless your name is Yasuo and then you're playing tank Yasuo and then you're cringe uh, in-game. But yeah. Um, even uh, washed up ranked 1 players don't know everything. Unbelievable. Uh, but now we have the anti-healing component and we see the Malphite, we can actually cancel him and annoy him. Uh, it's not very likely that we're gonna kill him because this guy has 1 billion armor, uh, but he can't kill us. And we can maybe force a spell here, and if he makes a mistake, we can get everything done. Holy shockwave, Oriana, what are you doing, little bro? But yeah, um, we peace out again, we got absolutely demolished by all their spells, our Seraphine is keeping us sustained, and we are just running them down. Now we look at the enemy in the back line, and we go for the high priority target, Varus. Then we clean up the Brom, which is absolutely free, and then we do a little fade away through the Vladimir and say goodbye, brother. We, because we can't kill him. But now, it's Nasher time. 
Sadly, my crocs are not available to be killed, so, well, I have to walk past. I just healed 842 from Seraphine Empowered Second Ability. Yeah. Yeah, surely that's uh, balanced. And there's the cane. He could have stolen this. And we knew that the Vladimir was going there, so we just immediately ult onto his forehead. And we hunt him down. But Phase Rush is keeping the safe for a few moments, but, well, he's dead after all. Yoink, your life is mine. Will the game be over? We don't know. Stay tuned for the secret. But yeah, uh, again, with the wave not being in position yet and us being there or not, not making big of a difference, I don't believe we can end. Um, we rather play it safe, take the enemy cams, and then, well, just kill the virus because we can charge, charge over walls. But again, my team should not, honestly, just not go for the try to end because it's too risky because virus was still alive. And it's very difficult for us to end in that scenario. We can just uh, go for Elder and then end afterwards. But it worked out and we are all very happy. Cool. And that is it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and catch you for more Rift Guides content.